No one was more private than Prince. And his assistant was notorious about anyone rehearsing with him. They'd instruct the band not to talk to him or look him in the eye. Is there any truth to that? Because there are different eras of Prince. And like I came in in an era where I guess some of his former band members might have said like he's a little bit nicer than he had been. Yeah, no, he was real private. I do take a lot of I do take a lot of uh, heed to that because Prince was like one of the most active people behind the scenes with 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 supporting causes that he believed in, and and that's kind of the way that I like to that I like to play it when it's necessary to speak out, speak out. But like, I really I'm not really about like I don't want you to see me at a protest with a sign in my hand, and then I'm like, all right, cool, and then I pat myself on the back. I'm just like, actually, I really you never see me. And I'm just doing the work behind the scenes to change these things I don't agree with, you know? And I think that's how he, I think that's how he did it. I don't think it was a matter of disrespect either. It's just that he's famous and that fame can be maybe a distraction from trying to get work done. Like that, that initial scouting period to even join him was like a three month back and forth process, which involved heartbreak. You know, it wasn't just, oh, I know Philip Lesseter. Let me just slide into your band. It probably wasn't that easy. No, no, no. It was like Phil had gone out there once or twice before we even went out there. And it took Phil like a month or two to go out there. And when he finally went out there, I was like, oh, shit, it's real. <laughs> like, Because, you know, I'm where I'm waiting tables in New York. Still, like, I, like at this point, you got to imagine, like, I'm 24. It's like, just finished school. I really want to do music, but I also know a good amount of people that are, you know, teaching or aren't able to do it full time or decided to do something else. And so, and I had just finished. I think like maybe six months before this happened, like, yeah, it was like I had almost gotten evicted out of my apartment and, you know, I was struggling to make it happen. And then they're like, oh, come play a prince. I'm like, no shit. Like, no way. I remember reading that Jonah Hill, the actor, is worth $50 million, but he wanted so badly to work with Martin Scorsese that he took a massive pay cut for The Wolf of Wall Street. He earned a minimum wage of just $60,000 for the seven-month shoot, and he would do it all over again in a heartbeat. So you don't you don't ask, well, how much is Prince paying me? You just go with it. You you know It pays dividends later just adding it to your resume. I imagine it's the same scenario. First of all, Jonah Hill was amazing in that movie. He <laughs> should have paid way more. Yeah, no, we went out there. We were there for a month before getting paid. And I remember, like, because at that point, I was, like, the youngest guy. It was me and B, BK Jackson was in this section, too. We were, like, the two young, youngest. I think he was a little younger than me. But everybody else had, like, had experience, had, like, played with big names before. And so it came time to negotiate the bread after, like, three or four weeks of being there. And people were, like, you know, the older guys were, like, no, nah, we're going to stand for this. And I was, like, yo, I'll take whatever I can get. And I, it was kind of weird because I kind of had to split from the guy that brought me. I was like, look, man, I don't want to be weird, but, like, I can't pass this opportunity up. Like, he's like, yo, I'm not accepting this money. And they were, like, playing hardball and stuff. And, you know, they sorted it out, basically. <laughs> but I was, yeah. <laughs> it was like, don't ever, don't ever talk to him about money. That was the number one rule. It's like, don't worry about it. Because everybody said, like, when we were getting advice from people who had played for him before, they are all like, don't ask, don't ask about money. Whatever you're going to get paid, it's going to be way more than you thought it was going to be. And you're, you're going to be taken care of. Like, don't ask about money. And so I just, yeah, it's weird, though, because now I feel like I, I function like that the rest of my life. I don't talk about money. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> but see, that's why I do this podcast. You know, if ever, anyone was ever wondering, like, my motivation for doing this, you know, I'm not a m- music producer. I don't make music. But what I find fascinating is that, you know, this man from Nigerian descent whose parents had expectations for him to become a lawyer or a doctor and what ends up happening. Back in Travis County at South by Southwest, front row, your parents are witnessing you play with Prince. Tears are streaming down their face. Your mom's weeping like a baby. I mean, what a moment. Yeah, amazing. You know, my parents were into hip hop, you know, kind of through me, I guess, but not like super fans, but it's like Prince, who was my Bible growing up, and then Tribe Called Quest is open for us, which like, I, you know, I'm like, kill them. <laughs> Fine. 
Like, I got a chance to see, like, Tribe Called Quest together, like, in true, like, they tore it down. And my mom was there. And my mom came to me after the show. She's like, you know, Prince is getting kind of old, but you are amazing, baby. 